Hello, I'm Super Duper Gamer, and today I'm playing D-Day Dice by Emmanuel Quinn. This is a cooperative game for up to four players, but I'll be playing it the only way I've ever played it, which is of course solitaire. Now in this game, as the name implies, we'll be rolling dice to try to move our unit of soldiers up the beach and capture a bunker. Let's play. Okay, let's go over what we got on the table here before we just start playing. Um, so here on the left, these are all the items we'll be able to purchase to help our unit out in their mission. And on the right, these are the specialists. These are the advanced soldiers with special abilities you can add to your unit in order to increase your effectiveness. Here we've got our player reference sheet. This is actually very well done, and I like it a lot. And here is our resource counter, where we'll be, we'll be keeping track of stars, which are what we use to buy the specialists. Item points, which is what we use to buy the items. Courage, which is what we use to advance up the map. And soldiers which makes up the bulk of our unit. If we lose all our soldiers, then our unit has been defeated. Here in the rule book, you'll find what map you're playing. Today we're playing Exercise Tiger, and it'll tell you what specialists and items to put out into the store. These are not all the items and specialists that come in the game. And then here's the map, here's the beach. This is what our unit will be trying to advance up. So our unit is represented by their die, and as they advance up the beach, these numbers get higher, indicating that it's getting harder and harder for the unit to survive as they get closer to this bunker. And the goal is to take the bunker at the top of the map. So while we're playing the game, our unit die will be located in a specific sector. It starts here with the S sector, and this gives us our starting resources of four soldiers. And as we move the die through the sectors, it'll change the defense values. Here we have a defense value of two, and here four, six, eight. That in case we'll be losing more and more soldiers as we go up. All right, so the first part of the turn is you have to roll the dice. Here's the dice we use to gain our resources, either our soldiers' courage, item points, or stars. Of course, the skull is a bad effect. Once we're done rolling the dice, we'll do upkeep, where we add our resources to our resource counter and increase or and flip our die to the next level. This is to keep track of how we can only spend three turns um, per sector. After upkeep, we can recruit, where we buy item points and recruit specialists to join our unit. After we recruit, we can move to another sector, either by advancing or by moving laterally. <clears throat> if, our, if we've spent three turns in a sector, our die will be on the red arrow, meaning we must move. Otherwise, it's an optional move. And after move, we do combat, where we um, take damage. So the defense value is two. We would lose two soldiers during the combat phase in this sector. If we were in a sector with machine gun fire, which is this here, we would have to roll a d6 and add that to how many soldiers we're losing for the combat phase of that turn. Also, you see a whole bunch of other stuff on the map here. We'll kind of go over it as we hit it, um, but basically there's, there's some things that happen. Green is basically good. If we go here, we find the scout and we get, you know, plus one courage to every time we roll the dice. Uh, here, red is bad. This is a requirement. It means we have to have the corporal in our unit or we can't go to this sector. Um, here, red, you see um, is something bad happening. That X over one specialist means we have to sacrifice a specialist just to go there. It's an entry requirement. Um, yeah, so we just uh, walk through all that till we get to the bunker. Once we survive the combat phase in the bunker, we've won the game. Okay, so our unit's gonna start here in the starting area. Our resource counter is gonna indicate we have nothing except for what the starting resources say. Here we have four soldiers. We've raised our soldier count to four, but we have zero stars, zero item points, and zero courage. Uh, we're gonna try to take the bunker. All right, well, let's go ahead and start with roll the dice. So now the first thing we have to do is lock two dice. So we need to choose two that we like and lock them. I'm going to choose this uh, red sol one soldier and white one soldier. Now you might think the two soldiers is better. It, it is. It's worth two soldiers instead of one. However, you get red, white, and blue bonuses in this game. So if I can now roll a blue single soldier, um, it'll give me a bonus. And actually, that one's worth a whole bunch of extra soldiers. So I'm going to want to re-roll both these blue dice. Now, I can choose to re-roll these or not. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hang on to that star. Because the only thing I'm specifically looking for right now is a blue single soldier result. So then you get uh, your first re-roll. All right, blue skulls. Definitely don't want those. Um, two soldiers, though. Yeah, I'll hang on to that. So then you get your second re-roll. But now, if I wanted to re-roll this star, I could do that. But I could not choose to re-roll these because they're locked. I got a blue star and a blue skull. Okay, so what the skull does is it cancels the effects of one other die. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel a star, which means I get two soldiers and two stars. That is my final tally. So then you move into the upkeep phase, where you update your resource counter. I get two soldiers and two stars. And you flip your unit dice, so it goes from one chevron to two chevrons. That's to indicate how many turns you've been in the current sector, meaning we just finished, you know, we're, we're next turn, it's going to be our second turn. And then you move on to the buy items and recruit specialist phase. I have zero item points and two stars. Two stars actually is enough to recruit a specialist, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll get the corporal, 
So it says here, reroll one die in your final tally. Cannot reroll a locked die, two stars. Okay, so we're gonna hang on to that. Now the specialist, their ability can be used every turn, over and over and over again. The items are different in that when you use them, they are consumed, and then we're gonna spend two, two stars off our resource counter to get that corporal. All right, next phase is move. Um, so I could move if I want, I don't want to. I'm gonna go ahead and hang out here in the water because as you move up, you start losing more and more soldiers from the combat because these defense values get higher and higher. So I'm gonna hang out back here, try to build up my unit a little bit before we really start pushing up this beach. And then combat, it says uh, of a defense value of two, so we're gonna lose two soldiers. So I go knock down from six to four. Now you can also use to sacrifice specialists. Um, you know, I could have lost him and then only dropped from six to five, but he's a lot better than a just then just a one number count on my soldier counter right now. So I'm gonna hang on to that corporal and just go ahead and drop my soldier count to four. And then we start our next turn. Um, so back into the roll phase. And then you gotta pick two to lock. Okay, so there's actually a lot of tools here. The thing about tools is they're really good when you have a lot of them combined and I'll show you why that is later. So I'm gonna lock a, a red and blue tool and then I'm not gonna re-roll this one. I'm just gonna re-roll all this courage. No tools, I'm gonna to go again, just trying to get tools, really. Okay, well, so there it is, there's my final tally. But now I have the corporal, I can reroll one die in my final tally, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do the white one, because if I can get a white tool, that would be best, because I get the red, white, blue bonus for it. Okay, well, there we go, that's better than what I had anyway, right? So I got five soldiers and three tools, no red, white, and blue bonuses. So now I'm gonna go upkeep. Five soldiers takes me from four to nine. And then three tools, you gotta check your item points chart here on your on your reference sheet. And it says three tools is worth six points. Now the reason I was trying to get a fourth tool is because the four tools would be worth 12 points. It would have doubled how much I gained from this. But as it is, three tools, I got six points for that. Uh, okay. And don't forget to flip your unit die. Moving into the buy items recruit specialist phase. Now here I have six item points. That actually is enough to buy an item. I can buy this walkie-talkie for five item points and it gives you plus two soldiers. Now I can hang on to it and use it whenever I want, but you know, I'm just gonna use it now. So when you use an item, flip it upside down because it cannot be bought again uh, unless you get a red, white, and blue tool bonus that actually lets you buy a used item. But in general, once you use an item, it's it's out of the game. You know, and you indicate that by flipping it upside down so it's no longer purchasable without that special find red, white, blue bonus. So I have to drop my item points from six to one because I spent five on finding that walkie-talkie. All right, after that is move, uh, not moving, and then combat. Again, we lose two soldiers, dropping from seven or from nine to seven. And then we're back to roll again. Okay, lock two. Oh, you know what? I've got red, white, and blue bonus right here. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna save all those. Okay, so I still need to lock two, and then I'm gonna set aside one and reroll these. You know what, actually I'm gonna keep those soldiers also. And courage, I need that, so I'm gonna reroll this tool. I got a star. So now you see I got two soldiers, one star, four courage. So I'm gonna go from seven to nine on my soldiers, from zero to one on my stars, and from zero to four on my courage. Uh, however, I don't need courage right now. Um, so that was the upkeep phase. This actually switches to the red arrow. And then recruit specialist by items. Um, I don't have enough stars or item points to do either of those. But look, I did get the four, or the red, white, blue for courage. So you look here and that's called battle cry. And it says gain three soldiers or if you move this turn, ignore all requirements of the sector you move to and don't spend courage to get there. So this is the battle cry side of the die. That means I get to move for free without spending courage. Um, but actually, you know what, there's no requirements to get here. Ignoring requirements to get there can be very good, such as if you're going here, you have to sacrifice a specialist. You have to kill one of your specialists just to enter this sector. But here, there's no entry requirement, and it only costs one courage to get to. So you know what, instead of doing the, um, the, the move special of it, I'm just gonna do the gain three soldiers, because it said gain three soldiers or do all that. So I'm gonna gain three soldiers. I'm gonna go from nine to 12. Okay, and then the move phase, I'm moving, and I actually, it's also, I mean, it's a battle cry, but it's a red arrow, too, I actually have to move. Uh, so I move up here. And make sure your die lands on the single chevron side. And now we go combat, and combat's four, so my soldier count is dropping now from 12 to eight. So I have less soldiers than I started the turn with. That's not good, I need to have a general uptick in soldiers while I'm this low on the map. 
Um, but it says sharpshooter here, and when it has that, it's in green. Green means it's good for you unit. And if you look in the rule book, what that means is you actually just collect the sharpshooter. And so I get this specialist to join my unit. May ignore the negative effects of one skull in your final tally. Sweet. All right, we're going to keep that in mind. Uh, moving on to the next roll phase. I'm going to try to start speeding up play here a little bit now that you guys, if you're following along, should know how to play pretty well. So roll the dice, choose two to lock. I'm going to lock these because they could work towards a nice little red, white, and blue bonus, and then I don't really want any of this other stuff. Uh, okay, and since I'm going for tools, I need all the tools I can find, so I'm definitely not re-rolling that tool. And there we go, there's my final tally. However, I do have the corporal, I can re-roll one die in my final tally. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to re-roll this single soldier die, see if I can get one more tool. No, it's a star. Alright, so I got three tools. Three tools, you check your thing, is worth six item points, so I go from one to seven. I also got one star, so I go from one to two. And I also got four soldiers, so I go from eight to twelve. And in the upkeep, you also have to increase your unit diet. And then you notice, oh yeah, I get an extra star for my sector. So my stars goes from two to three. Now recruit specialists by items. I have three stars, so I'm going to use them for the beach master. Gain three soldiers every time you advance. And he costs three stars to recruit into your unit, which I have. So I'm going to add him to my unit, take my resource counter, and drop my stars from three to zero. And move into the move phase. Do I want to move? No. Okay, now the combat phase, I lose four soldiers. So I drop my soldier count from 12 to eight. Back to roll. Choose two you like to lock. I'm gonna lock both of those. Now we're looking for a double soldier on a white die to get that red, white, blue bonus. Do I wanna keep any of this other stuff? And no, not really. I did not get the double soldier I was looking for. I got some stars, a courage, a skull. I don't want any of that. I'm gonna reroll all of them again. There we go. There's the what I was looking for. So that's gonna be a fresh troops, uh, a fresh troops red, white, blue bonus. That's gonna give me plus six soldiers. And then this is my final tally. But don't forget, I can reroll one die in my final tally. Now I shouldn't have moved these down here yet because with my corporal, I can reroll one die in my final tally. But it still can't be the locked dice. You have to remember that that's these. That's why I set them aside. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna. This is my final tally. But I'm gonna reroll one die in my final tally. It's still a skull. I'm going to use it to cancel out this tool because the tool all by itself is kind of worthless anyway. So now this is what I get. I get six soldiers plus that uh, fresh troops red, white, blue bonus of gaining six soldiers. So you get the dice plus the red, white, blue bonus. So it's six plus six is 12 soldiers that I'm gaining right now. And I get one star. So my soldiers go up from uh, eight to 20. And my stars go up from zero to one. And I flip to the third chevron. Oh, yep, actually I get an extra star for the sector. So my stars are now at two. And now uh, move phase, or recruit specialist by items. I have seven item points. That's enough to buy an item. Yeah, sure, why not? I'm gonna buy it. Ignore landmines for one turn. It costs seven item points to buy. I don't think that pointed out. I pointed that out before. That's the cost in item points. Seven item points to buy. Ignore landmines for one turn. So. The item goes in my inventory. I drop item points from seven to zero. Now the item just stays there and has no effect until I decide to use it, and then it has its effect, and then it will be discarded. Well, it will be you know flipped upside down and returned to the um, item area. So now I'm in the move phase. So I want to move. You know what? Actually, um, sure. I don't have to because I'm not on the red arrow. But I'll move. I'm going to go ahead and move over here to sector two so I can get that scout because I see him hanging out over there looking like he wants a unit to join. So I'm going to move over here, but I cross these landmines. So what happens when you cross landmines is you have to roll your d6 and, uh, and take that much damage, lose that many soldiers. But instead, I'm going to use my mind detector to search for landmines and not let anyone die. So that gets used up and placed upside down back in the item pool. And the scout is over here, so he'll join my party. This is a specialist that says add one tool to your final tally. This tool has no color. So that's really good if you're trying to stack tools because like we saw, having one extra tool can double how many item points you get from that roll. Notice that I did not trigger the beach master's ability of gain three soldiers every time you advance. Advancing is moving forward up the beach. I just moved laterally. That's not advancing. So now I go into combat. Combat here is still four. So I lose four soldiers. They drop from 20 to 16 and we're back at roll. All right, choose two you like. I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, the red and blue stars and look at this stuff. Do I want it? I've got that scout. So yeah, actually I'm going to keep the white and blue tools also. So 
So we're looking for a tool or some white star. There's our white star. Sweet. So that's going to be a red, white, and blue bonus on stars and then two soldiers. No, let's see if we can get another tool. No, let's. this is our final tally. Let's use our corporal to reroll one die on our final tally. It's a skull. <laughs> All right, so let's use our sharpshooter to ignore the effects of one skull in our final tally. Awesome, so that's ignored. I get three stars plus the red, white, and blue bonus here called leadership. And if you look at your bonus for stars, it says add one white result to your final tally or gain two courage. Well, you know what? I'm gonna add a white result of tools. Now I have three tools down here plus one tool for my scout, so I have four tools. So you look at your item points and you see four tools is 12 item points. Sweet, so I'm gonna go item points from zero to 12. Stars from two plus three is five. All right, and that concludes uh, my upkeep. Oh, no, it doesn't. I get one courage for my sector. Courage goes from five to six. I almost always miss those little sector bonuses. Okay, uh, now recruit specialists by items. I have five stars, so I can recruit a specialist. I can recruit any specialist I want. I'm gonna grab these uh, the captain, this has a really great effect on it. He says, Ch change the color of one die in your final tally, but not its result. I think we've already seen examples of where that could have uh, gotten me a red, white, and blue bonus, right? So yeah, the captain's gonna join my unit. He costs four stars, so I'm gonna drop my stars from five to one. And then I have 12 tool points. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use my 12 item points to buy a flak vest. This only costs seven, but it, I can still only buy a single item per turn, so I can't spend that extra five. I'll have to hang on to it for some other time. Your unit ignores all machine gun fire, that's MGF, and that's what that symbol stands for. Results for one turn special damage is also ignored. That's that's not indicated on this map, but there is special damage next to a machine gun fire symbol. It would have that six, and then you would have to check the rule book to see what the special damage for that sector on that map is. But I'm just gonna buy this flak vest. My unit's gonna hang on to it till they're ready to use it. And then we go into move. Do I wanna move? Yeah, sure, why not? I wanna move here. Now this means I have to have the corporal in my party before I move there, but I do, he's right here. So I'm gonna move here. I go back to one chevron. I beach master, gain three soldiers for moving. So that increases me from 15 to 18. Oh, forgot to take my item points away. So I drop from 12 to seven. Uh, and then here I have the corporal. That was just a requirement. Nothing bad actually happens. And now for damage, I take three plus machine gun fire. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna flak vest out of that machine gun fire. Sweet, so I'm gonna ignore machine gun fire for one turn. So I take three, so I drop from 18 to 15 soldiers in my unit now. And we're back on roll. All right, pick a couple of you left. I think I'm gonna start trying to stack soldiers. So I'm gonna hang on to this red and white soldier. Now I would keep that double soldier too, but it's blue, so I'd rather try to reroll the blue dice to try to get a blue soldier. Um, and actually here, don't forget, we got a plus one tool on our map. So you know what, actually I'm gonna change my mind here. I'm gonna try to stack tools because that plus one tool could double whatever I would get without it. I'm gonna reroll all these and just try to get as many tools as possible. Look at that. Oh wow. All right, so I still have one more reroll and it's a tool, okay. So this is why you'll, you'll get to see now why I was going for tools. All right, so I got six tools here, obviously two red, white, and blue bonuses. Um, and I have a tool for my scout and I have a tool for my sector. So that's eight tools. All right, check your item points. So six tools is 48 item points plus 24 for every tool after that. So 48 and 48 is 96. So my tool points go up from seven to 103. Yeah, 103. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put it on three because uh, this counter, I'm just gonna put it on three because this counter doesn't go over 99. But remember, that's 103 item points I have. <laughs> All right, uh, and flip your unit. So we also got two uh, red, white, and blue tools. What do those do? You can find a used item, still pay its item points and cost, or gain two stars. Well, you can only find one item per turn, and the items I've already bought aren't that great. Actually, you know what, that ignore machine gun fire is pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna buy that for seven. Normally I wouldn't be able to buy that because it's already been used, but I'm using my special find to buy a used item. So seven drops me down from three to 96. <laughs> okay, and then um, obviously I cannot use my second one to find a used item because I already found the only item I can find during a turn. So gain two stars it's gonna be. 
So my stars go up from one to three. Now I have three stars, I could recruit a specialist. Um, I could recruit the Minesweeper and ignore landmines, but I think I'm not going to do that yet because I want you guys to see how landmines work. So I'm just going to I'm just going to ignore that for now. I'm going to hang on to those stars for later. I don't have to spend them right now. Okay, and then move. Do I want to move uh, and get out of the way of that machine gun fire? Yeah, sure, actually. I'll move over here. Every time you move, you flip it back to the one chevron, even if you're just moving laterally. Uh, but now, now the, the, it's a uh, defense value of six. So my soldiers drop from 15 to nine. Actually, no, also it's a black. So I should put this on the black shield. That means I have to move. You can only spend one turn here. If you dilly-dally here at all, they're just going to concentrate all fire on you and your whole unit will be wiped out. Um, so I'm going to have to move the first chance I get. So but that was combat, so we're back to work. Okay, now we have to pick what we want. Um, definitely don't want to keep those tools. Yeah, I think I got enough item points for now. Oh, soldiers though, I'm starting to run low and the defense values are starting to get higher. So I'm going to hold on to those two soldiers. Now if I can get that reinforcement to revive the bonus from the three single soldiers, that's going to be really great. Ooh, do I have the thing that changes the color? I do, I have the captain. The captain changes the color of a die, so I'm not going to reroll that. I can change its color to red. And then we'll have that red, white, and blue bonus. I haven't forgetting to use that up until now. Uh, so that was my second reroll, so that's it. That's my final tally. Uh, I really don't want these tools. Still a tool. By the way, I rerolled that because I have the corporal specialist, which lets me reroll one die on my final tally. Anyways, this is it now. So I've got two plus one for my scout is three. Three, three tools is, is worth six item points. I don't even want them anymore, but that raises me from uh, 96 to two. 102. So I'm just going to put that on two. Okay, I got one courage and three soldiers. So courage goes up from six to seven. Soldiers goes up from nine to 12. But I also have a red, white, and blue bonus because I'm using my captain, which says change the color of one die in your final tally, but not its result. So I'm going to change the color of this single soldier to red, which gives me a red, white, and blue bonus on single soldiers. So you check your player reference guide and you see single soldiers. Add four soldiers to your unit and four soldiers to another unit. Now in the rule book, it actually tells you if it references another unit, just do it to your own unit if you're playing solitaire. So I get plus eight soldiers. So that raises, that gives me up from uh, 20, up to 20 from 12. All right, I've got 20 soldiers. Moving into recruit specialist by items. Definitely gonna buy an item because I have 102 item points. So you can only buy one per turn. It's gonna be hard for me to use all these item points. I'm gonna get a Bazooka for 15, subtract seven from the defense of your sector. That's really good. All right, so 15 drops me from two to 87. Yep, 87. And now the move phase, I have to move because I cannot stop in this sector. So I move up here. It's got a red X on a specialist. Okay, so I spend two courage to, do, to cross that line. That drops me from seven to five. And I have to kill a specialist. I'm gonna kill this scout because I don't need any more tools. <laughs> and now combat. So I take uh, eight plus machine gun fire. Well, you know, what? I'm gonna bazooka to drop it to one and I'm gonna flak vest to get rid of the machine gun fire. So it's only got a defense value of one. So I drop my uh, soldiers from 20 to 19. And we're back to roll. Now note this green, all these green blocks. Um, that's actually, it's not on your play raid because it's not common enough, but it's here on the bottom of your map and it says no dice are locked here. So when we do our first roll, we're not gonna have to lock any dice. So we can reroll all of them if we want, or... So then now I have to figure out what we want. What do we, we only have 19 soldiers. Uh, we got plenty of item points, we don't want that. Five courage, we need three to cross this line and then four to get in the bunker. We need seven, so we need a couple more courage. Um, three stars, we don't really need any more stars. We don't need any more specialists. We got plenty of specialists. So all we need is soldiers and two courage. So yeah, we're gonna keep that and that and that, and we're gonna reroll all this. Okay, now, that's not good. I mean, it'd be better if we could get a red, white, and blue bonus out of the soldiers. Now, the second reroll, skull, so definitely gonna corporal that. Reroll one die in our final tally. It's a tool. Okay, well, that's too bad. We did not get any red, white, and blue bonuses, so we only got six soldiers and one courage. So our soldiers goes up to 25, our courage goes up to six. You know, I'm wondering if I forgot to pay this to courage way back then. 
And one tool gives us one item point, raising us from 87 to 88. Yay! All right, by specialist. Um, again, the only one available is the Minesweeper, which I don't really want to buy because I want you to see me cross the mines because we haven't done that yet. So we're just going to not buy specialist. Items, definitely going to buy items. We have 88 item points. Um, so I'm going to buy a Bangalore Torpedo, which lets us reduce the defense of our sector, not a bunker, to zero. Uh, so I'm going to not use that now. I'm going to save it for when we're in a sector that has 10 defense value because uh, that will be more helpful. Okay, move. Um, nope. Oh, wait. So upkeep, we also have to flip our unit. Move, not moving. Combat, we lose eight plus machine gun fire. Now we actually have to roll for machine gun fire. We don't have an item to stop it. One, sweet, <laughs> good roll. All right, so that's nine. So we drop uh, from 25 to 16. I don't know if we're actually gonna have enough soldiers to do this. I mean, that Bangalore torpedo is gonna come in handy. Oh yeah, also, yeah, we do have to pay those item points. So we drop from 88 to, uh, whoops, wrong way, 68. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hang out here a little longer instead of moving. Obviously, I already made that decision, but the reason is because if I go up here, I can't find items. And these items are super useful, especially when I have so many item points left over. So I'm going to keep hanging out here until until I spend some more of those. All right, and we're back on roll. All right, pick a couple you like. Like I said, I'm definitely going for soldiers, so I'm going to hang on to these. If we can get another double soldier to roll. There we go. There's a red, white, and blue. That's fresh troops, that's a plus six soldiers bonus. I'm gonna reroll all of these for our second reroll. And uh, yeah, actually I'm gonna keep that courage too. Okay, so we got um, eight soldiers out here, plus six for the red, white, and blue bonus is 14 soldiers and one courage. So our soldiers go up from 16 to 30 and our courage goes up from six to seven, which is good because we can check and see that we're gonna need three there and four there. So seven is how many we need and flip our unit die to three chevrons. All right, now we get to buy items again. Now there's an item up here. I definitely want to get another 20 cost one, and that is the flamethrower. Subtract 10 defense of your bunker. So we're definitely going to use that when we hit the bunker, which means we can count on it being a two instead of 12, but it's still got machine gun fire, and we've still got to go through uh, sector nine here, which has machine gun fire. <clears throat> okay, so are we going to move yet? We only have 30 soldiers. Uh, yeah, actually, I think, I think maybe we can do it. We can do it, let's move. So we're moving up. We flip our chevron, or oh yeah, don't forget to pay your item points, so I drop from 68 to 48. All right, flip your unit to one chevron, pay three courage to do it, so you drop from seven to four. And we cross landmines, so we have to roll landmines, which is the same as machine gun fire, three, so we lose three soldiers to the landmines, drop from 30 to 27. Um, there's no entry requirements, none of these red, like lose a specialist. Uh, that's the only entry requirement I see here on this map. So now we're into combat, and it's 10 plus machine gun fire. Well, you know what? We're going to Bangalore Torpedo to reduce the defense of our sector to zero. So it's zero plus machine gun fire, but we do still have to take that machine gun fire. Whoop. So roll that D6 for machine gun fire, and one, yes. Okay, so we drop uh, soldiers from 27 to 26. Okay, that was, that was really helpful. All right, moving on. Next turn. Of course, we start with roll again. I think, honestly, I think we don't need anything at this point. So I'm just going to keep soldiers. Oh, wait, we're back to a new sector, so we actually do have to lock. And then choose what to re-roll. Uh, I don't want any of that. Second re-roll. Uh, corporal, the skull. Still a skull, so we use it to cancel a star. All right, we got five soldiers and a courage. So our soldier count's going to go up to... 31 and our courage count is going to go from 4 to 5 and our unit's going to flip to two chevrons all right now that was upkeep and now move yeah i'm going to go ahead and move right away so flip to one chevron pay the four courage to move in there uh so that's the most courage you know to actually go into the bunker before we go in though we're going to throw a grenade take out uh take out that machine gunner and we're also gonna put our flame. We're gonna we're gonna clear it out with a flamethrower. <clears throat> so we threw in a grenade and then we flamed it up. So now it's only got a defense value of two with no machine gun fire. So all that happens is we lose two soldiers, dropping us from 31 to 29. And now that we've survived the attack on the bunker, uh, we won the game. That's SDG plays D-Day dice. I hope you enjoyed following along. 
as we capture this bunker in Exercise Tiger. I think our unit's now ready to actually send to the beaches of Normandy. So, what did I think of this game? Uh, surprisingly, it's actually not one of my favorites. I really thought it would be, because I love solitaire play, and this game was definitely designed with a solo player in mind. Now, it's designed as a cooperative game, but they have solitaire rules specifically listed in the rule book. I'm not just, like, making it up or playing two-handed. And it feels like a good solo game. It really does. And a lot of solo players really love it. So how come it's not really a hit for me? I don't know. I love solitaire play. Like I said, I love custom dice. This game has really good custom dice. So right, let's go over some, uh, some pros and cons. Pros, components, and component quality. The dice feel great. They look great. They were made well. The maps um, are actually cardboard cutouts. They could have just, you know, made them on some, some card style material. But no, they're thick and heavy duty, and they feel and look good and sturdy and quality. Um, the rule book is good. The rule book is, I, I had no problem learning the game through the rule book, but what's really good is this player reference sheet. They did an excellent job on this. They got all the information you need right here at, on, a, on a small thing to put on your table. Um, table space, this game is pretty good. Once you, once you know what all the items and specialists are, so you don't have to have them laid out in front of you like this, uh, and you can just have them in a little stack and just flip through and find the one you want, table space is, it takes up a very small area. Um, next pro, theme. I really thought they did a good job um, melding the mechanics into the theme, such as, you know, this sector that has no, nowhere to take cover, it's black, if you wait here you're gonna die. You have to move, you have to run through this sector. That was a good way and a good thematic way to make it differentiated from the other sectors. Also, the items and the way they integrate, when I threw a grenade into the bunker and that took out the machine gunner, you know, and then I sprayed it with the flamethrower and that reduced greatly how many casualties we would take as, we, as my unit jumped in there because I took out kind of most of the enemies in there before we jumped in. Uh, you have to cross minefields and you're going to randomly lose a number of soldiers when they sprint across this minefield. That feels real. It feels like they really... Um, made the mechanics work with the theme, and I like that about this game. Uh, another pro, it's a lot more than just Yahtzee. Obviously, they took the main mechanic, of, or, or, you know, everyone's super familiar with the Yahtzee mechanic. You roll, you choose, you know, some of them to re-roll, you choose some of them to re-roll, and you try to get uh, three of a kind, or if you get six of different stuff, that's actually also a thing called an award, which I didn't show you in the video. Um, yeah, so you know that's what you're gonna be doing for like half this game But there's a lot more to this game as far as trying to decide Well, you know what? I really want to get stars because I need to get some specialists to increase my units power before I can advance into these other sectors But I still need to get some soldiers just just to survive this round's combat attack uh, So yeah, there's a lot more to think about you have to plan ahead You're looking at the sectors you want to go to and you're like I think I want to go this way across the beach But I'm gonna have to sacrifice a medic to get into this sector so I'm going to have to buy a medic at some point, might as well get it early so it can do more good for me as it'll save me a soldier every combat phase of every round. Okay, so cons. I said it's not one of my favorite games. Why? What makes me not in love with this game like I thought I would be? Uh, it, it's, hard, it's hard to really pinpoint it. You know, I played a game and I played again and again and again and just uh, the enjoyment factor is just not there for me. So, so what's holding it back? I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm not a game designer. <laughs> um, but, but one thing I did notice as I was really thinking about it, um, there's no art in this game. Not, not, a single, not a single piece of art unless you consider what you see on this map art. Um, mm -mm, there's no art anywhere. Uh, and I really appreciate art in games. That's something I know I appreciate art in games. But until I really thought about it I, it, I didn't realize there was no art in this game until I really thought about it. So maybe if it's not a big deal for you, then it's not going to hold you back at all. But once I realized it, I thought it was a little surprising. Uh, second con, um, it, second thing I, second thing I want to say, maybe why this game doesn't isn't one of my favorites. It just kind of feels like work when I'm playing it. Like I said, the my I don't have a super high enjoyment factor. Um, I'm just you know rolling to get more soldiers so I can move them across the beach. I don't know. It's just not there for me. But maybe it is for you, and so that's why you know just watch my playthrough. Um, if you think it looks like fun when you're watching my playthrough, I bet you'll love this game. There's a lot of content in this game, uh, especially if you got in on that Kickstarter, if you can get someone in this Kickstarter pledge. I don't, I'm not sure. I think there's a lot of content, avail content available outside of Kickstarter also, but there's a whole bunch of different maps. The different maps introduce different mechanics. A lot of different stuff going on. There's one where you have to climb a cliff and you have to like roll four skulls to climb up it, but 
it's really hard to do and maybe you won't be able to do it so they actually offer an ability in that map to actually retreat to a different sector too which is something that normally you can't do so yeah the game changes as you change up the maps you know and like i said we didn't have all the items or all the specialists out here it's dictated by what map you're playing so if it is in a game you're going to enjoy there's a lot of replayability built into it and that's a really good thing they did when they were making this game um, other than that, you know, not everyone's going to like every game, so take it with a grain of salt, look at everyone's reviews, and see what you think of the game for yourself. Um, but am I going to keep it? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a really good, well-made game. Now, if the game was just trash, I might sell it or throw it away. But no, this game goes in my collection, D-Day Dice. I'm, I'm going to want it on my shelf as, as a collector. Um, am I going to play it again? Yeah, certainly, but, you know, not, not a whole lot.